Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Ernie. And this is Budget Nerds. Who is all in your mind? You are not alone. No, you are not. All right, Ernie, I think it's time to get back to our nerdiest, nerdiest roots ever. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, you know, I feel like there's two parts of this show. We have like the philosophy of money, how you think about money, your mindset. And then we got like, let's talk about our categories. Let's get into the software details. Right. And uh, I, I think we've gone a little bit, you know, we, we've, we've had some category episodes, but I think, you know, we, we, we've done a lot of philosophy of money kind of stuff. I want to talk about something real nerdy and detailed and in the weeds, Let's talk about memos, transaction memos. <laughs> I saw this topic on the list and I was like, oh my goodness, either we're hard up for content <laughs> or we're just going super nerdy. So Let's I know we have tons of it. ideas to talk about. So we're definitely going super nerdy here. I love it. Yeah. And a big shout out to Jaina Lee, who is one of our certified coaches at YNAB and a old friend of YNAB. Um, she messaged me and basically wrote this podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Jane Lee. Uh, she was like, I would love to see an episode on memos. And here are nine points that you could talk about. <laughs> and so we're, we're just going to go through her, her message. We're going to go through her points, the way that she uses memos. Uh, and maybe, I don't, you know, I think they, they speak for everybody. This is the way a lot of people use the memo field. Um, and we'll talk about some ways that we use memos and and just just dig into it. But maybe we should introduce like what what the heck is a memo, Ernie? What are we even talking about here? So there's pieces of information for each transaction that you import or add. You have the payee, who you gave the money to. Mm-hmm. There's the category where you're pulling it from in the budget. And then there's the amount, inflow, outflow. But then the memo is a field where you can just add extra information, more details about that specific purchase or the inflow. And the memo field is perfect for budget nerds because we love reporting. We love sifting through transactions and pulling out those details and making decisions. And so you can fill them with a lot of additional information. Yeah. So it kind of makes it a little more rich, you know, if you want to, if you want to remember something it's it's a memo it's like a memento right it's just a way to remember a detail about a transaction that isn't related to one of the other many fields so you can write whatever you want so let's let's jump in there let's talk about some ways that uh that you might use them um one thing jana lee said she said i make a note if i'm buying groceries for gatherings like if you're if, if you're doing like unusual grocery spending okay uh that's a good example i think anytime you are making a transaction that you wouldn't typically make for a category. You might want to put a little note in the memo and be like, here's why this is here. This is a weird transaction. I know, (laughs) right? Just for your future self. Right. Because, you know, months later, you're looking back at reports, you're looking at some trends and you're like, geez, why were there? I spent so much money on groceries in April. You can go through the April grocery transactions and, oh, we had that party spent 125 extra dollars yeah and man i i remember feeling this these moments where it, it's like an aha moment it's really what you're doing when you put in a memo is you're putting in a little a little easter egg for yourself <laughs> you know what i mean and I've, I've had that happen where i'm looking at a trend report you know like what's going on they're dining out oh my gosh right and uh see a spike and sometimes I've had experiences where it's like, well, I don't know. I don't remember why we ate, ate out so much back then. And then and I'll be like, oh, yeah, we had a baby or something like that. Right. Or sometimes I'll look at it and be like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember one time we we got uh, we got Chipotle and it was like overspending and we put in there um, the the dryer broke <laughs> like like we're doing some extra dining out because our dryer broke and we were we were extra busy going to the laundromat and doing all this stuff so yeah because yeah, then when you look at the report you're not beating yourself up you're like oh i giving yourself permission right like being graceful Make about it a little situation. excuse yeah, yeah, yeah. An excuse that's what it is that's what it is ultimately so yeah any any kind of unusual spending you're doing in a category because the category doesn't describe um necessarily the reason why you're spending it just describes good point the purpose of the money uh, and why it's going out so if you want to give a little detail you can there i've uh, never used memos 
in this way, but okay. gives me something to think about. I like it. Yeah. So I, I guess an excuse for yourself if you, if you want to know why <laughs> why something's unusual. Next one. Items bought at a big box store, especially if there's a split. This is so, the biggest one that I use memos for easily. So like you go to Target, you're buying some groceries and you're buying some household goods, some consumables. You're listing out. Obviously, you're not listing out the groceries, what you bought there, but you know what you bought for consumables, something like that. Yeah, I do it for Amazon, Walmart, anything that you any place where you can buy anything, you know, um, and it's really helpful. It, it's, it communicates with my past self. So or it communicates with my future self, I guess is what it is. So like, if I ever want to know, okay, I, I, I bought all the stuff at I'm a put up, I put it on the pool supply thing. And I was like, what, what did I buy? I say like, Oh, I bought 10 gallons of bleach to put in the pool chlorine, right? Um, and so I could go and see that I could see the price on that. So I can I use that to kind of track prices on things, you know. But if I just put in Walmart pool supplies, you know, fifty bucks, it could be any number of chemicals or supplies I bought for the pool, right? So if I so say exactly make what plans I plans for the next time around. Yeah. Another thing is it communicates with Caitlin, uh, my wife, because she's in the budget too, and she might want to know, you know, what we bought and if she needs, if she ever wants to know, or even if she's curious, she can just look at the memo and it's there. So it's helpful for all sorts of things like that. Yeah. And that's, I can see it being helpful for a, a, a variable category like consumables where mm-hmm. there's really no rhyme or reason why one month is higher than the other, but it'd be good to be able to look back and, oh yeah, that was the month I had to buy, you know, Tide Pods and dishwasher pods and a ton of toilet paper. Like everything hit at the same time. So that's why the bill was so high. Yeah, yeah. I think it's helpful just because, yeah, any kind of real general category, like like you said, like consumables, um, where you don't necessarily know, you know, if you, if you if you put in like the dining out category, you know, it's like, oh, I went to a restaurant, right? But if you go to Walmart or you go to Amazon, it could be anything, yeah. <laughs> literally anything. So it helps just to kind of kind of keep it in your mind uh, and also look back on later. All right, what's another one? Um, okay, Jana Lee says, uh, when she wrote in, this is a good one. She said, uh, I will note everything I buy with my clothing fund, fun money, hobby money, even dining out money, the why and with, and with who, who they ate out with. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. I don't go with this detailed, but basically what Jane Lee was saying when she wrote into me, she said, uh, basically she, she notes what she bought for all of her discretionary categories. So discretionary sure. meaning just categories that are like frequently spent out of that are just kind of at your, well, at your discretion. You can spend it how, how much you want when you want. Um, yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. I really am so interested in the who, like writing down where you went out to eat and who you ate out out with. Yeah, because you mean, might get you, it. You can use those memos to basically look back on the story of your year or your month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, all these things you did, people you hung out with. Yeah, you could be like, oh, I haven't. When was the last time I hung out with Ernie and went out to eat with him? You know, you can look it up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. I think that's interesting. You're telling a story here and you're also explaining the reasons why, um, you know, why you spent this money and, and it, it maybe it will kind of help you justify like, oh yeah, that was money well spent because I spent time with this person or, um, and then also I find this really helpful. Um, I actually will do this sometimes for for dining out i'll say what i bought at at a restaurant like there's a few restaurants where i get like you know there's really only like two meals i'll buy there like i'll get the chicken nuggies or i'll get the burrito you know what i mean yep yep (laughs) so like yeah like okay well let's we'll take it the the quintessential example i'll go to chipotle right and i actually i looked through my memos before this and i i noticed a chipotle charge where i put in burrito and then another one where I said burrito chips and queso, right? <laughs> and they're, they're they're different amounts, and it's actually really helpful. Okay, because if I say like, oh, I'm if I'm getting to the end of the month, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't have very much money. 
Okay, how much does it cost if I want to get the chips and queso? Okay, it's a little too much. Oh, how much does it cost if I want to get the burrito by itself? Okay, I can afford that, right? <laughs> and so you can kind of remember and have an expectation before you go to the cash register. So that's kind of interesting too. I've heard a lot of other wine abbers who use the memo field to record what they ate at a restaurant. So yeah. the next time they go back, either they have a frame of reference for what to pay or I want to get something else besides what I got last time. Oh, yeah. Those adventurous ones who don't just get the same thing at every restaurant. <laughs> <they go to. laughs> or there's two or three things they order every time and they just want to always regularly rotate, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I want to do that more, actually, because that's kind of interesting. Also, again, you're just kind of telling the story. Like, this is what I got. I enjoyed it because I you know, I got this, this burger or whatever, you know. Uh, or maybe it's something even fancier. Like, maybe you ate at an interesting restaurant and you want to write down... I don't know how you felt about it. Um, yeah, you could like put a re- little review for your restaurant in there. I don't know. There's all sorts of things you could do. So Now, I don't know if Jana Lee mentioned how she records transactions, but I would imagine to successfully use memos, not to successfully use them, but to make it so it's not a burden, mm. you would have to enter spending yourself because yeah. you just came from, you just made the purchase. All that information's in your head. It takes 20 seconds to type into the memo field yeah well i know jana lee she any of these discretionary things she's entering herself so okay (laughs) because i'm just thinking of importing you know i can't remember what i bought a couple days ago and so a batch of transactions comes through and i'm like ah this is overwhelming i don't want to use memos but yeah in the moment yeah that makes sense yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never want to make this a burden. Like, don't, don't try to remember what you ate on like last Thursday. <laughs> if you're entering that, if you're importing that from a week ago, you know, just don't worry about it. It's okay. But I do think it can be really helpful if you can do that. All right. Another way, order numbers, warranty numbers, mm. phone numbers, anything you want to refer back to regarding a purchase. An example of this would be folks who scan a receipt. They upload it to Evernote or Google Drive or something like that. Then they take that link, paste it in the memo field. Is that something you do? Because I know you you use Evernote, right? I do, but I I don't track receipts like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. You could do that. Um, Or yeah. Or if it's something that you might need to. I I actually thought of you, Ernie, uh, with a. What's the oh Menards right? You, you talked <laughs> about Menards. The money of Menards. <laughs> you talked about Menards a while ago, and have you you have to do a rebate? Do they are they still <laughs> doing that a lot? That's all they do. Yeah, I just sent one in the other day. So I imagine like there's like a number you have to remember, or is it like a physical thing you have to keep track of for the rebate? How does that work? Yeah, it, you send it in, and then there's nothing to track. You are just trusting them to give you the amount that you are due back. They send you like a check? How does they this send work? you a check. This is antiquated. No, it's not, no, it's not a check. It's, it's a check that you can only use at Menards. You can't oh. go and cash it at the bank. That's why they're doing this. This is like a Absolutely. whole. This is a racket, man. Okay, I see. Because <laughs> then you got to. Oh, interesting. So it's and like so a, it's like a I gift used, card they give you back. And so yes, and what mm. I used to do was, hey, I don't trust you. Like either someone's gonna steal my rebates, or you're just gonna short me a buck or two. Uh-huh. So I'm gonna create a scheduled transaction. Here's the amount that I sent in and requested. Uh-huh. And here's the amount, you know, I'm expecting back. And so, so then expect- when that came back, I would check it and I would just delete the scheduled transaction. Right. Because it's not real money that you can budget. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. You could do that in a memo too, maybe. Um, you'd have to have some way of remembering. I guess the point of the scheduled transaction is that it comes up and reminds yeah. you. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. You could put that in there. I was just thinking like if there's like a confirmation number you need to like get a rebate, put it in the memo. You can look at it up later. You know, Well, what I could do is with every single because it's it's an eleven percent rebate, and it, it the offer is always going on. So every time I go to Menards, 11%. I I see what that rebate amount is. I could enter that in the memo field, and then I could just add up, you know, manually what that all those rebates equal. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. So it's always eleven percent. Man, I'm so interested in this Menards thing. I mean, it's it kind of sounds a little fun to be honest like it is not fun ben <laughs> i promise you okay okay I, I don't know it just seems like 
you know, a fun thing to keep track of, but I guess it's not. It's <laughs> it's annoying. It's annoying. Just give me eleven percent off at the at the register. Well, yeah, but then they, they wouldn't come back to spend the gift card money, and <laughs> and they're. Do you think they like mark up the price by eleven percent and then like? And then, but maybe I don't not. think I don't they know. do. They're they're competitive. They're really yeah, competitive. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to sell anything. Yeah, but it, nobody's gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna. Yeah, uh, but I'm, you know, you know, they've done the calculation where like this this percentage of people. You know, what one percent of people are gonna be like Ernie and actually do the rebate? Well, and, and, <laughs> and the people that do it, the, I think they fall into two camps. They're either, hey, I'm sticking it to the man. Like I, I don't <laughs> care how troublesome this is to go through. I just, <laughs> right. I, I, you know, stick it to the man all. by going through their their long bureaucratic <laughs> process. Or the people who buy thousands of dollars of stuff, and you just, well, you might as well pay for a stamp and send in that rebate. Right. Yeah. Because that could be a significant amount of money. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, anyways, put that in there. Uh, actually, I thought maybe like a tracking number if you're if you're uh, buying something online. Yes. There's certain things that I get really excited about arriving. It's part of the fun, you know, and yep. you, I'll like track. I'll check the tracking, the the shipping, tracking, shipping, shipping, tracking, whatever you call it. <laughs> the, I'll, I'll check the shipping number uh, like 10 times a day. <laughs> Just like waiting for this thing. I remember at one point uh, UPS had like a map, like a live map of their trucks going around the neighborhood. Really? Yeah. Um, I could watch that for hours. I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was my new computer. This computer I'm working on right now, I think, was arriving. I was very excited about it arriving. And I like tracked it and it would like come near my house and then it'd like go somewhere else. <laughs> Apparently, they had to stop it though because it was a major safety issue. People were like showing up and accosting these four UPS drivers, like, give me my package now. And they're like, I can't give you the package. It's buried in like 12 other packages. I have to deliver those first. And yeah, so that I, makes sense. You can imagine how problematic that would, <laughs> that would yeah. be. But I remember because I, there was another thing I was excited about. And I'm like, where's my live map? I want to watch the truck go around. And uh, I looked it up and they were like, yeah, we had to stop that because people can't handle it. And I'm like, yeah, that, that tracks. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, man. Yeah. So put the tracking number in the memo. That can be really helpful, too. Yeah, this kind of turns YNAB into the one-stop shop, right? You don't have to go to all these different platforms or apps to gather the information. Go to the transaction and it's right there. Yeah, I think at the core of this, um, YNAB is a place, especially for people that are real nerdy with it like us, YNAB is a place that you know you'll always go back to. And that is a key thing that you need for... A second brain is, is is the term like a, it, you it needs to be you want to keep all your notes and all your thoughts in a place that you know you're going to constantly go back to that way it can go out of your head right so yep. if i put a memo number or a, a confirmation number or order number in ynab i would i could just forget it and not have to think about it anymore because i know i'm always going to come back to ynab but i can always find it so you're probably going to come back multiple times that day <laughs> yeah yeah Another thing, uh, confirmation numbers for any bills. So, you know, if you send in your just just a wild example, I'm just going <laughs> to pull out of my hat here. If you send in a water bill online for your city oh, no. and they don't let you copy and paste your account number into the little field because of security, I guess, which is like it's just old. <sighs> Uh, and then you, and you transpose two of the numbers and you're late on your water bill because they didn't tell you that you transposed two of the numbers and the bill failed. Uh, you can look up your confirmation number and, and if you need to talk to customer <laughs> service about it, you'd have it right there. So um, completely hypothetical situation. Completely hypothetical. Yes. We, we've talked about my woes with uh, with them, but it's automated now. Ernie, have I talked about this? You have mentioned it's okay. automated. It's it's automated. Yeah, yeah. Every time I get a water bill now, it says "Do not pay bank draft," and I'm just like, "Yep," and it works. So so far, it's worked. So we'll see. Welcome to the 21st century. Oh my gosh, it's like the last bill that's that hasn't been automated, <laughs> <laughs> and now it has. But I had to like send a letter. <laughs> like if if anybody makes you send a letter, they're bullying you at this point. Anyways. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all taken care of. So put your confirmation number in the memo, any other numbers like that. I don't know if I've used the memo field for confirmation numbers. You know, it's funny. I actually 
checked I, th- I thought the same thing i didn't think i had either but i looked through my memos for the past like four or five months and uh yeah there was a there's quite a few in there actually so apparently i do okay. do that maybe i don't ne- really need to because apparently I, I forget maybe i don't even look it up i don't know <laughs> the sixth way that you could use memos which it's crazy that we already got to six and we have more <laughs> i know <laughs> right about, about memos here people Name of a particular location on a transaction in a vacation category. I use memos for this reason because we have one vacation category. It's called trips. And we take one vacation every year, but then there's some weekend trips throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Christy takes some trips with friends. And so I just love putting, all right, Chicago, you know, for all those transactions. Or this year we're going to a cabin and then we can go back and, hey, remember that? Ice cream shop from Minneapolis a couple of years ago. It's easy to track down yeah, that kind of information. I, I love this because all what I do for particular vacations that I'm saving up for, like uh, this June, my family's going to the Outer Banks, right? So I have a category just for that. And I save in that category and then I spend all my money in that category. But I don't want to like hide it i don't I don't want to have these this oh, this huge list of hidden categories that are like every single vacation i've ever gone Same. on or every single trip right so instead what i do is once i'm done i put a hashtag actually i put a, a, a i say i'll say like hashtag outer banks 2023 right and i'll just put that in the memo line on all the transactions and then delete that category and merge it with the my my vacations and travel category and so it's great because you don't have to have if you, if you didn't do that, the only way you'd be able to keep track of separate vacations is would have a separate category. But now you can, anytime I could just search up hashtag Outer Banks 2023, and it would come up with all those transactions. I could see the selected total. I could see how much it costs last time I went. Yeah, super duper helpful. So I've heard of YNABers who use flags to mark the various trips, but you can only have, there's a limited number of flags. Yeah. So you can have an infinite number of- What you really need is a a tag. And actually folks ask for tags like as a feature a lot. And I don't really understand it because I'm just like, well, you could just, you can make a tag in the memo. Like the memo does that work. I think there might be some, some little, little things that might. Yeah. Like what I've run into is, and again, this is just kind of the OCD in me. I like having my memos consistent. Uh-huh. So when I buy a particular type of grass seed, I almost want to be able to start typing in and it brings uh, up yeah, that exactly would be cool. what I wrote before. So like that tag right there. I so see. then I can, I can match everything. Because you have to keep all the tags in your, in your head at that you, point. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Like, oh, well, how did I do this seed? How did I put it in the memo last time? And then I'll right. have to search through and. Yeah. Okay. 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 But you yeah. can search, you can search memos. Totally. So, yeah. And, that, and that's the whole point. Like I, I wouldn't use memos except for maybe like the confirmation number op- example. The only time I would ever use a memo is thinking I'm going to search this thing in the future. And yeah. so you, you want to think like searchable things. Like how would I look for this transaction? Like, you know, if I, if I want to know, Oh, how much should it cost? Cause I bought that weird thing at Chipotle. I bought like a, I bought a quesadilla instead of a burrito one day because I was feeling feeling saucy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, how much did it cost to get the quesadilla? I would search case. I, I can't just search Chipotle, you know, because it's going to be like a billion transactions, right, Ernie? Yeah, um, <laughs> at least. Well, if, you're, if you're Ernie anyway, right? But uh, if I search quesadilla, come up. So yeah, you want to put that. So like when you're putting stuff in the memo, think like, what am I going to search in the future? Because that's really what it's all about. It's not so much about scanning and finding it. So, all right. Um, number seven, specific things for pets, grooming, food, toys, Etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, this, so Jana Lee was pet, pet specific. She said, I, I know specific things for our dogs, grooming, food, toys. That way I can s- search to see what we were spending on specific pet things. Okay. So yeah, that, that's exactly what we're talking about. Right. But this, this goes for anything where it's a broad category. Like you might have a category just called pets, but like that can cover all sorts of things. I mean, it could cover vet bills, or cover fun stuff like toys or, you know, uh, I mean, you, you, what do you have for Ridge right now? I, I forgot. We did a whole we pet have episode. a group. You have a whole group. Yeah. With separate categories. Yeah. And so there's a lot of value in that because you can you can look it up. But if you yep. don't, if you if you had all one, you might want to put a little more details in the notes. 
So yeah, but even like our fun category for him, that could be sniff walk, sniff spots that we reserve, you know, parks to bring him to, or it could uh-huh. be toys we buy for him. So it would be yeah. nice with that differentiation. It's almost like having a subcategory uh, as for, for tracking purposes, yep. you know, like a category underneath a category, <laughs> right? Um, so you have like a broad category, and then if you put in the memo, something consistent, you could search that up and you could you could have it all listed there. And I'm not doing this for every broad category I have. It's only right. for the ones that really mean something to me, like my yard category. Mm-hmm. I want to know when I bought sod, when I bought seed, when I bought some plants, you know, things like that, that I really find interesting that I would love to go back to. And it brings a smile on my face seeing, mm-hmm. oh, I spent $30 like on sod. Yeah. The hobby stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because it's it's not just about reporting. Like, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about oh, use your memos to search and like find information. But it could also just be, you know, maybe you look up that whole category and you see, oh, you know, this is when I, it's just just fun. It's telling a story. It reminds me of the episode we did at the end of 2022, where we talked about, we went through the purchases that we made. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're, you're trying to get this sense of like, did I love the way that I spent my money this year? And memos can highlight that for you. Yeah. You know, looking through all the the gifts you've bought for f- specific friends and the lunches you've had with family members. I mean, that's going to bring you joy. That's pretty cool. I've even seen people use emojis in the memo to like describe how they feel oh. about transactions. Um like I've seen people even like rate it like like they'll like put in five stars for how I felt about this or one star because I felt bad about spending this money or you know and, and that tells a story too. That's I, interesting, I, man. I feel like we could, man. This could be a whole thing in the software one day where it's just like, you know, you rate your transactions how you feel <laughs> about them, like sad face, happy face. I don't know, and then like somehow track that. Uh, it'd be a whole new report. I mean, it could be really interesting. But yeah, for, for now, you could put it in the memo and kind of tell a little story about how you felt about it just in a quick way. Or like maybe like on a trip, like maybe you went on a trip. Um, like when I go to the Outer Banks, like, oh, I went to this restaurant and it was a real stinker, one star, you know? So if I ever go back, it can be like, don't go back there, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Everything goes back to Chipotle. And I'm thinking every time I order from the app, I get that notification hour, two hours later, rate your order. Oh, yeah. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that would actually, I mean, that's that's a lot, but maybe they would be limited. You know, like mm-hmm. YNAB knows, hey, these are your favorite categories. How much did you love spending this money that just came from the yard or the pool category? Yeah. I don't know. There might be something there. There's a lot there. Yeah. So yeah, use it to tell your story um, and see how you feel about things. Um, Yeah, why don't you take this one? Gifts, the eighth way to use memo fields. I note who it was for, what we bought. That helps me not accidentally get the same thing for someone. I've even had my kids ask, wait, (laughs) what did you give me last year for my birthday? I never remember, but YNAB does. (laughs) I love that. Thanks, Jana Lee, for that. Um, Yeah, I think it's really funny that she said that she put in a note of who she bought a gift for and what it was. So she didn't end up buying the same thing for the same person. (laughs) Just so that shows how much, how many gifts Jane Lee's giving out. (laughs) But uh, I think it's really cute. Like, it's just, (laughs) you know, and yeah, that is true. Like, you ever hear that? Like, like, what did you give me for my birthday last year? Like, you never remember. But yeah, well, why not? Yeah, does. and you don't want to buy, you know, your mom or your dad the same thing every single year for their birthday or Mother's mm-hmm. Day, Father's Day, right? So yeah, put that information and let why not remember it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just the person and, and what you bought. That's always helpful. Um, last thing, if you ever do write a check, do you write checks, Ernie? Is that a thing that you do? I do because I have to sometimes. Me too. Um I'm pretty rare. To. Pretty rare these days. Um for a while i i paid my nanny with a check uh that this was years ago now we do like a bank draft thing um so i wrote a check every week for that but uh other than that maybe like sometimes when you have like a like a professional come over and do something in your house i'll write a check for them but more and more often they're using they have like the swipe thing on their phone or whatever yeah but yeah i guess every once in a while you have to though right yep have to and i generally don't enter 
those checks myself. They import, and with my bank, it it imports the check number in the payee field. Oh, nice. Okay. And so then in the memo field, that's where I write out what I bought. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I generally wrote over and said you put the check number right in there if you need to. So I guess I guess if you have like that checkbook with the carbon copy kind of thing, you you could look it up that way is that is that the purpose of that because i don't my checkbook doesn't have the carbon copy i didn't spring for the fancy carbon copy oh, it, thing it, I, that's a different price tier that's, that's yeah, crazy it's a different price tier i'm not gonna pay for that like for the carbon copy <laughs> yeah well it's yeah, another nickel sheet, and diamond it's another yeah. sheet of paper i mean I'm not gonna. it's time to switch banks <laughs> <laughs> yeah now that i think about it i guess is, I, is that not normal i don't know <laughs> i didn't think that was normal i've always had the carbon copy and it's always been like the the first tier of pricing Oh man! Well, yeah, I didn't even see the point of doing the the check number because I don't have <laughs> anything to look up because I don't have the carbon copy because I because I'm too cheap. <laughs> you know, I've thought about going back to putting the check number in the memo field because each individual check number creates a brand new payee. So then right. I look at my payees and I've got like you know twenty check number five thousand eighty nine and then five thousand ninety. Right. That's just kind of annoying. But well, it's it's interesting because um. When I write a check, which is again increasingly rare these days, but when I do, I put it into YNAB right away. Um, which I don't know if that's the right way to do it because the money hasn't actually left your budget, but you know it's spoken for. So it's it's almost like a scheduled right. transaction, but the scheduled transaction is uh, is the, the money's actually taken out of your account. You know, I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I feel like it just makes sense. Uh, but sometimes, like. I've had people take a long time to deposit a check and it's sitting there for weeks, you know, and that's awkward. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but maybe that's a good way to remind yourself like, Hey, uh, did you get that check. Did you lose it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I once cool. had a check that didn't get cash for two or three months. Yeah. That's the worst. And so I'm like, ever. well, I think this person, this was a professional who, who came to the house and did something. It was mm-hmm. a very small amount and they must've lost it. And I'm like, okay, sorry. Yeah. Eventually, it is deleted or call <laughs> them. Or, yeah, yeah, I guess they're not going to do it. I guess they're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, and, and along these lines, I, I do the same thing with like PayPal, Venmo. So the transaction imports with the the name PayPal, Venmo, and then in the memo field, just what it was for. That's what I use it for. Yeah, that's huge. Um, anything else that you went, did you go through your, uh, your memos at all? Did, did anything else that you noted? <sighs> Nothing that Jana Lee has not mentioned. Yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. like for the vehicle registration, I would p- put which one is for the Sienna, which one is for the Corolla, things like that. Um, I differentiate between Roth IRA deposits, which went into Christie's account, which went into my account because we both you know, give it to the same investment firm. Yeah, I do the same. Um, and then just a lot of nerdy lawn stuff. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that no one else is interested in but me. Yeah, I did a quick scroll through too, and I noted, uh, well, actually, probably the, the thing I use memos more for the most is uh, is poker. Uh, you know, I talk about this a lot, how I have this poker habit. Ha, ha. I said habit, hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit you know could go either way uh put this poker hobby with my friends and we play together and uh, it's interesting i'll always put in like the transaction because because they pay me and then i pay them back at the end of the night right so it's a you know big long list of transactions and i will uh i'll say you know john buy-in and then the amount right is is in the amount field and then John cash out. So I can always see like how much money they made or lost. And I remember uh, talking about this with my friends and they're like, Oh, Ben has this like big advantage because he has more information. And I'm just like, what do you think I am? Like, I'm not like some kind of shark here. Like, I, I <laughs> like, what am I going to do with that information? That <laughs> like, Oh, John loses lots of money. Oh, <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> I don't know. So it's funny. I put these, in, these things in there, but I never actually, look at it there was one time when somebody was like how much money did uh jordan lose you know or win the other night and i could look i could look i could look it up and find out you know by just comparing those two transactions so yeah it's always kind of interesting um other things yeah like anytime i buy a video game from steam i'll put the name of the video game in there 
Um, anytime I have something really memorable, like I just bought tickets for a Ben Folds concert in September. Really looking forward to that. Uh, I have a Ben Folds memo that I just came across. Yeah? My wife went to a Ben Folds concert here in Eau Claire. He's everywhere, man. If, if, if you're a Ben Folds fan, he's just added some tour dates and he's coming to my tiny little town. He came to Ernie's tiny little town. I love it. <laughs> so, I've seen him once in concert and he's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. One of those people you need to see. I mean, I've been a fan of him since high school and yeah, he's going to my little town in September. So I put, so yeah, I, I noted that when I was scrolling through our memos, I was like, oh yeah, like that's, that's a fun little moment, you know, to mark that. Um, and then, yeah, I'll mark specific things at restaurants. I talked about that already. Um, <laughs> okay. I got to show one. Uh, I'll just show a screenshot of this if you're on, if you're on, the, uh, on the YouTubes here. Uh, but if you're on uh, the podcast, I'll have to describe it for you. I have a transaction that says bounce about for the payee, entertainment, $2, and it says socks for Teddy, eye roll emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we go to this place. I'm, I know where we're going. You know, where we're, you know exactly the story here. Yeah, we go to this place called Bounce About, which is like a trampoline park, right? It's like just a, it's incredibly stupid. Like it's just a bad idea. Like I, I wonder how many broken bones there have been because it's just a, it's an old movie theater where all the walls have been taken out and it's filled with trampolines and children jumping around and <laughs> it's just a so loud. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's and somebody's everybody's getting hurt every t- you know, five seconds you know you you sign this like gigantic waiver before you go in right but it's so fun i mean it's the best so obviously you have to have socks because you can't have your weird feet bouncing around on the trampoline and so we told my son teddy well, that's just gross <laughs> yeah it's, it's gross it's gross you gotta have socks just because it's gross if you don't. <laughs> you got to have socks. So um, we told my son, Teddy, bring your socks because he's wearing his full flip flops. Right. And we're like, go to your room, get some socks, put them in your. So he's he's seven, right? He's a seven year old boy. So this is why we have to talk to him very specifically. Go to your room, get your socks, put it in your pocket, keep it in your pocket so you can put socks on and get to the place. Well, of course he didn't get socks. So we had to pay $2 to buy socks at the trampoline park. So hence the eye roll emoji uh, on the memo. <laughs> okay. You surprised me. I didn't think that's where it was going. Oh, really? What were you thinking? At our trampoline park, and I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to call them out because, may- and maybe I'm making this story up, but mm-hmm. the way I'm recalling it, even if you had socks on, you had to purchase special socks because they had the oh. little grippies at on the bottom well that though these socks do have grippies on the to bottom to prevent the slipping around and possible right. injury so everyone was forced to buy them that's an eye roll that's a big eye roll too because ugh, but like, again maybe i'm wrong they on don't this. tell you you know like you know, it's like by the way you gotta get the socks yeah but, but yeah, but, but that is true. They do have the grippies on the bottom and they are kind of nice. Like I think they are worth two dollars because you can you can put her around the house. I actually have some too. Um you can put around the house with those. I, I don't have them from Bounce About, but I have them from a from a stay at, at a hospital. They give you like these little socks. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. You know, like if you ever go to the emergency room or something, they give you these little socks that have like these grippies because they don't want you to fall, you know, because that's a liability. And huh. uh, I had those and my wife got them from when she was um, uh, from all the babies we've had. And uh, yeah, they're nice because you can put around the house with a little extra grip, but you don't have to wear shoes. So there you go. So they're actually kind of nice. I mean, like we, despite the eye roll, I, I would pay two dollars for because <laughs> I don't think we have them anymore. So I would pay two dollars for for those socks. That's it. We don't have ours either. So they're really cheap. They fall apart right away. I probably paid like $500 for them at the hospital. The, the, <laughs> the insurance is probably a line item like socks, $700. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're getting riled up here, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Anyways, memos. Uh, do use them. Have fun with them. Go crazy. Let us know okay. how you use them. The last thing I want to mention, <clears throat> oh, okay. you know, I'm, I'm just pulled up YNAB and I'm looking through my transactions and I don't see any usage of memos that we didn't talk about. But something I noticed, and maybe other wine numbers do this, I will delete them from imported transactions because they bring over a lot of unnecessary information. 
Oh. And I think at the beginning of YNAB, I was more inclined to delete unnecessary information from the memo field than Uh add important information. Because I just, I I like my payees, my transactions to be clean. Wait, so you get... You get information in the memo field from your imported, like every yes. time it imports. I don't. Not get every that. time. Sometimes depends on the merchant. Okay, and it just it's always I've never got cluttered that. and confusing. Yeah. It's, it's capital like, letters and yeah, number, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. garbage. Those, I always I always clean up the payees. Like I, I hate that 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 nonsense is terrible. And you know, I this is a new level of nerdiness that I have not reached. But when I reconcile my tracking accounts in the memo field, it has the Entered automatically by YNAB. Oh, oh and right. And in, yes, a, in yes. the perfect world, I would go through and delete that from every one of those reconciliations because I don't mm-hmm. want that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's useful, but like, yeah, I, I see what you mean. I always, if I ever do a reconciliation, um, usually it's in a cash account. I always delete that too, and I put it into a, I put it to some category and mark it as lost or you know whatever it was. So yeah, yeah, I never keep that either. See, yeah, yeah, don't don't come into don't automatically put stuff in my memo. Like, <laughs> come on, that's my space. That's my personal space. <laughs> All right, we went through nine ways. What did we miss? Why don't you sound off in the comments? Otherwise, if you're listening to the podcast, send us an email, budgetnerds at ynab.com. We'd love to hear how you're using memos. But uh, we can't end the show without a couple YNAB wins. So you ready, Ben? Let's do it. Okay, I have a YNAB win from Stephen P, who wrote in over email. And they said, Ben slash Ernie. I love the slash. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> love, the, <laughs> love the podcast. I, I, I noted that I, I started first there, Ernie. So just saying. It wasn't Ernie slash Ben. You know, ben everyone. I, 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 <laughs> okay. This is a real thing. <laughs> it always comes in Ben Ernie. Ben well, Ernie. Because Ernie and Ben doesn't have the same. It, 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 this is always a debate with people. And it's like, but it's it's really about how it how it flows. It flows. How yes. It flows. It just, yeah. Ben you got Bert and Ernie and Ben and Ernie. Yeah, you know. Yep. All right. Ben and Ernie. Love the podcast. I listen to every episode. I've been using YNAB since 2014. Oh, just like me. I was actually 2013. I got a year on you there (laughs) and have talked nonstop about it to my family. This year, my brother and parents decided to jump on the YNAB train. Love it. And have gone all in. My brother has paid off two credit cards months ahead of schedule. And my parents have paid off credit cards and already got a month ahead. My brother especially tells everyone how it changed his life. He used to eat out all the time, and with a budget, he buys more groceries and lost a lot of weight. Awesome. He joined me as the crazy budgeter of the family. Thanks, YNAB. Oh, this is the best YNAB win. That is packed with wins. Yes. I I love this because, you know, uh, I've had this too. I've had had, uh, family members jump into YNAB, and it takes a while. You know, uh, Stephen's been using it since 2014, but only this year did uh, his brother and his parents start using it. So, you know, it might take a little while, but you you know, you'll get them eventually. Just 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 be patient. And Stephen, you have to look forward to family get-togethers every single year, right? Yes. Hey, here's an opportunity to talk about. You've got another now. thing you can talk about. <laughs> so, I love it. That's so cool. I love it. My win comes from Shahad. Shahad commented on the budgeting together episode that we did. I don't even know how long ago, Mm. but it was a while ago because we have a lot of wins to get through. YNAB wins. I've been using YNAB since 2016. It has helped me pay off all my debt, 100K in student and car loans. Wow. Wow. And save a year's worth of expenses. I was just laid off. And although I'm grieving that loss, I'm grateful that I don't have to worry about not affording immediate financial obligations. Mm. Thank you, YNAB. P.S. Loving YNAB together makes budgeting so much easier for my partner and I. Congratulations, Shahad. I mean, this so it's a tough win, right? Because you lost that job and nobody likes that. But you didn't have the stress that comes along with how am I going to make ends meet? You have mm-hmm. that year's worth of expenses, and that just had to give you so much more peace of mind and just free you up mentally, emotionally to pursue your next opportunity. Very yeah. cool. 
yeah, you know, YNAB doesn't um following these these pra- these principles, it doesn't take away the bummer things in life, but it takes the edge off. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Shahad could be mourning the loss of the job and also be freaking out about finances, but he, he, it's only, it's only the one, you know. So that's huge, and it's been uh, I think it's been like six months since that episode. So I hope you got a new job, Shahad. Yeah, let I would us love to hear an update. Yeah, send us an update in the comments if because uh, I'm I'm sure you'll listen. So we'll see you soon. All right, friends. If you have a YNAB win, comment on the YouTube episode. Otherwise, email us budgetnerds at ynab dot com. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, until you hear us again, happy budgeting. Happy budgeting. Uh-huh.